Guardians, what is going on guys? Sly here, back at it with a long overdue Destiny 2 video for you. Now while I'm not entirely for the way Bungie has its season pass set up, I do love a good puzzle. Then add in Outbreak Prime and there was no way that I could pass up for making this guide. Outbreak Prime, as it's now called Outbreak Perfected, which I'll just simply call Outbreak from now on. That was basically my go-to gun for just about every activity the last half of Destiny 1. So to see my favorite weapon return is freaking awesome, and especially in the way that it did. A Black Spindle, Whisper-esque kind of style, you know, tons of traps, jumping puzzle, and plenty of nostalgia. So in this video guys, I'm going to go through every step on how to get Outbreak Perfected, aka Outbreak Prime from start to finish. It's still the same gun, same perks, individual bullets are much weaker than in the D1, but the nanites do seem to do more damage. It is incredibly stable, still looks fantastic, so let's dive in and get this bad boy. Alright, so to start things off, you have to get a Fallen Transponder, which starts the quest, and that is your official quest step. So, do you remember that door on Titan that says unlocked in those uh, adventures, but nothing was ever inside of that room? Well, with May 7th nerf to Spectral Blades and the update that followed it, this room is now open for business. Now, the current daily adventure for today, May 7th, was Bad Neighbors. That will take you right to this door. Actually, you'll pass right by it. Now, there are other ways to get in here through other adventures. Not sure if it has to be a heroic adventure or if you can go through normal means, but this room right here is where it all begins. So once you unlock the door and walk in, take a look at the item itself. It'll say examine fallen device. And upon inspection, you'll see that you need to find six nodes that will then unlock this transponder, which will then open up the Whisper-like mission. So let's go ahead and start finding these six nodes, which are located in lost sectors throughout the EDZ and Nessus. So the first four, like I mentioned, in EDZ, the last two are in two lost sectors on Nessus. Now for the picky out there, the way I'm listing these is not by the number listed on the quest depths, but simply by ease in terms of the next closest to you. So what you're going to do first, guys, is head to the EDZ and then bounce over to the Drain Lost Sector. Make it all the way to the end. Do not worry about your enemies. Once you get to this cavernous area, you'll see blue flags hanging on the ceiling. Jump down, go all the way to the bottom, and you'll see two purple sheets covering falling equipment. Your very first node is located right here. Alright, so next up, let's go ahead and take a look at node number two, which is located in this same area, just across the way in the Whispered Falls, another lost sector. So what you want to do is go ahead and head on in, load into the map, and then make your way at the very end of this tunnel and your very first big drop. Don't go ahead and jump over like you're going to continue on with the uh, Lost Sector. What you want to do is jump down and then stop and look over to the right hand side. You'll see this kind of eerie green glow. Go ahead and walk towards it and you'll see some skulls kind of hanging on some poles. The second node is located right in here. Kind of creepy, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so next up, you want to fast travel to Trossland. Enter the church and get into the Atrium Lost Sector. Of course, that's the Lost Sector within the middle of the church. Go ahead and go down the steps and keep going until you see your first group of fallen enemies. Simply run past them and then jump down off of the balcony. Once you jump down and you land, look to your immediate left and you'll see this little small room on the side of the wall here. At the very end of that, it'll be your next node. Once you pick up that bad boy, that will be your third node. Next, fast travel back to Trossland again. And this time we're heading to Widow's Walk, which is the other lost sector to the left of the church. So make your way to the very end where the chest is located inside Widow's Walk. Now in this lost sector, it's kind of small, lots of enemies here, so you might have to fight your way just to get them out of your way, but what you want to do is while you're looking at the chest, you'll notice there's a broken building up and to your right, that's where ads spawn out of. What you want to do is jump on the second level behind this chest, and you'll see that the node is simply on the floor waiting for you. Alright Guardians, four down, two more nodes left to go. So what you want to do is fast travel to Nessus, more specifically the Cistern area. Once you're here, hop on your sparrow and head towards the carry-on pit, which is towards the right once you land. Now the carry-on pit is the lost sector at the very bottom right hand side of the map, located within the Glade of Echoes. Now this one here can be a little tricky, but it's super easy. At the very beginning, you can skip all the ads here simply by jumping up on some of these broken pieces to make your way to the node. But like I said, it is a little tricky. It's simply easier to just run by everything. So what you want to do guys is just keep following the path, 
run past the boss, and once you're looking at the chest, you want to run past it on the right hand side and make your way to your first small drop off. Do not fall off the edge. You just want to go down this little bump right here. Then you want to walk over to the wall on the right hand side and jump past the outer barrier. There's like a small alcove right by this kind of false wall, and here is where Transponder 5 will be waiting for you. Alright, so guys, grab it, and now on to the very last one. Go ahead and fast travel to Exodus Black. Once you land, make your way over to the Rift Lost Sector. So, go ahead and follow the path all the way down until you're looking at the chest. You don't have to do anything here either, you don't have to fight the boss or all the ads, just run by everything. Once you're looking at the chest, go ahead and turn around and start making your way out. The second crate on your left hand side is where this next node is located. Simply pop up, jump on in, and grab it, then my friends, you are good to go. Those are all six nodes. Next, it's time for battle. So what you want to do, guys, is grab some friends who are high light, preferably 700, and good at jumping puzzles. Once you have your fire team, go ahead and head to the farm. Yes, the farm, that farm, and the basement to your right is finally open, and you can explore down here. Ever since D2 launched, I've been waiting to go inside one of these basements and now you finally get to see what's inside which is you know pretty much nothing but <laughs> just our old friend Mithrax there's a lore story here but that is for another time now the mission is timed at 20 minutes and it's easily twice the size as the Whisper Quest I found out that it's best to have a Warlock running well with Phoenix Protocol a Melting Point Titan and a Tether Hunter or Void Walker Warlock or you can always do another Hammer Bro, or you can go Shards of Galanor and a Hunter, or Gunslinger, Nighthawk, that all works fine. But Melting Point with Syntheseps helps out tremendously. Also, it's a very good idea to bring your jumping boots for the Titan as well as the Hunter. Now, as for weapons here, guys, my personal recommendation, at least the way I did it, is two players with Arbalest and Hammerheads, while the third rocks Whisper. Enemies in this little quest hit very hard, I mean very hard, so don't use a shotgun, you won't really get a chance to use it very often. Another option would be from the page of early Whisper Runs and grab the exotic scout rifle Polaris Lance. Haven't tested it yet, but I bet Polaris Lance would do pretty damn well here. Arbalist is definitely the way to go. It saves you so much time. And this quest is nothing but shields after shield after shield. So if you don't have Arbalist, then each of you will need to equip a different element. One solar, one arc, and one void. It would be a complete pain in the butt. But if you did do it that way, then you could have more whispers for damage. Ultimately, totally your call, but Arbalist and an LMG for two players, while the third player went scout rifle, hand cannon, and whisper, worked very, very well for us. Okay, so once you load up your team, go ahead and jump on in. Now, just like Whisper, this quest is all about shortcuts, speed, and damage as fast as possible. The mission has only been out for about five hours now, so my way might not be the fastest. There could be many different ways. Not quite sure right now, but this will get you through it with plenty of time to spare as long as you don't die too much. So to get started, go ahead and run by this first little drag here, Mithrax will take care of that for you, and run all the way to the back, you'll see a tunnel on your right hand side. This little shaft will take you to your first taste of how hard these guys hit. Sniper Shanks can almost two shot you here, Arbalest saves the day for sure. Now the path is fairly easy at first, so just keep killing enemies and retrace your steps from the very first mission in the D2 vanilla campaign, you're pretty much just, you know, working it backwards all the way until the very starting point where you first appear in the game. It's kind of hard to get lost through this first quarter of the quest. It's pretty much, like I said, just retracing your steps in the very first mission. Now from here, I will speed things up just to show you the route. It will take a couple of times running through this to get you and your team into sync. There are some levers to pull, some vents to shoot, some tricky jumping, so just follow my lead and I'll stop it when we get to a hard part.
Okay, so when you get to the cart hangling into nothingness, this can be pretty tricky for Titans. Lion Ramparts are extremely helpful for this and for the rest of the jumping puzzle. So you can switch back to your main exotics at the boss fight, but Stompies and Ramparts will help you out tremendously here. What you want to do is fall straight down, and then right as this wall gives away, there are platforms you need to reach that are way out in front of you, and they're out there quite a bit. So if you're a Titan, you need to slow yourself down mid-jump, or you won't have enough boost to push yourself forward. You'll just keep, you know, sinking slowly. Warlocks, no problem here. Hunters shouldn't have it bad either. But for a Titan, it can be a little tricky just because you have to pre-boost to slow yourself down. Now, as soon as you see the wall start to kind of slope inwards instead of bulging out or being straight, start slowing down and then pressing forward. If you can get your shoulder charge proc the entire time you're flying, use it to bridge the final gap. At the very bottom of this walkway here will be a lever. This will open up a vent above you. Only one of these vents open up, which is kind of hard to miss. Go ahead and jump on in there, and then let's keep going. Alright guys, now that you made it to this part, it's more of a one at a time kind of jump, at least for this section. If you have Lion Ramparts on, you can do this in one single leap, just showing off master skills, but the idea is to land on the platforms above the center fan, and then look for the cutout in the wall. It'll be highlighted in red. This lets you slide past the blades without dying. So jump into the groove, fall for a bit, and then land on the platform, repeat until you're out of fans and at the very bottom. Once again, Ramparts save the day in here. Now, once you make it to the very end of these little white ledges, in the final room off to your right-hand side, there will be a lever that you need to pull. So make sure you do not skip it, grab this lever, and then keep following the tunnel into the next part. Alright, so now that you get into the room with the monitor, these red arrows that you see here indicate deactivated switches. Now there is one in each of the four corners. So your first run through, you should probably run as a group, just to kind of learn everything. But to do this efficiently, and to do, you know save the most time, one's going to have to go left, and the other two go right. These hallways have electric barriers that will kill you, but on top of that, there is this guardian chomping machine that buzzes around these tight spaces. Notice these little cubby holes in the hallways. Those are little hidey holes. If you see a red light in the distance or a red light coming up behind you, run away as you see right here because this thing is pretty awesome. Each switch is kind of like its own little cube. Picture two straight lines in the middle going next to each other in parallel and then two cubes on the left stacked on top and two cubes on the right. Every cube has its own switch on the very backhand side with tunnels branching off the two main lines leading back to the cube. So the switches are located here. Once you switch on all four of them, head back to the main line and take it all the way to the end. The exit is located on the opposite side of where you guys entered, but again, all four switches need to be on for this door to open. If you do get lost or turned around, there are these little green exit signs on the walls that may help you to orient yourself. Once the door is open, take the exit and go ahead and jump on these super slow lifts. Now I do have a theory here that I have yet to prove, but I think if you get on three specific lifts and activate them all at the same time, it might lift you up you know, in one go a lot faster. But again, it's only been a few hours since this activity has been live. I have lots of exploring and you know, experimenting to do, but these things are very, very slow. So don't worry if you think they're not working or it's broke or whatnot, just hang on, it will get you to the very top. Once you reach a level where you're comfortable, you think you can jump off and make this little catwalk in the middle, do so. Because as soon as the lift gets to a certain point, it'll just simply plummet all the way back down, and you're going to have to sit there and do all this slow crap all over again, which is something you do not want, because if this is your first time through, you're probably running low on time. 
Once you're on the catwalk, go ahead and take the giant manslide, and there will be a room off to your left once you make it down here. Now, right before the stairs, there'll be another vent shaft. Take this vent shaft, follow the tunnel until you reach the next room. Now, this next room, there are no levers in here, but this time you have to look for a symbol on the wall. Now, I'm not sure what this symbol is, but I know it used to accompany Zer symbol when he arrived at the tower in Destiny 1, and it's also on a lot of flags. Not sure if it's a cormorant seal or a seal used by that special council in Destiny, which the name kind of slips my mind right now. But anyways, the symbol is on the back wall down on the bottom right. So what you want to do is shoot that symbol and then a secret passage opens. Simply follow the only path available to you and ta-da my friends, you are at the boss. If you arrive here with 5 minutes left, you should be absolutely fine. Anything more than 5 minutes and it's almost a guarantee. There are two strats at least so far. You can damage the boss and not worry about any of the other adds. Or you can go with the flow, which is what we did. You just want your Whisper Guardian to focus on the servitors and the tanks while taking as many shots at the boss as possible. The other two with Arbalest help out by shooting the shielded shanks and then focus on the boss. It's best to try and wait to use your supers after you killed the second large servitor. Once the second servitor is down, the boss will teleport back to the very front and there will only be tanks from then on out. And plus, you know, servitors give those damn shields to everything, which is something you definitely do not want. Like I said, tanks will appear, but the boss stops teleporting around as much. He will mostly stay in this front area of the room from here on out. So once the second servitor is finished, the tanks appear, have your whisper guy take them out, and then you want to use your melting point. Unleash every super you have right then on the guy while melting points active. Hammers, Nova, Blades, Nighthawk, or if you're tethering, wait for another round of adds to appear so you can gen more orbs. After that, it's all about critical shots and use melting point as soon as it's available. Be sure to tell your teammates you're about to use it. Do not say, I'm about to hit with melting point, and then while you're saying it, you're simultaneously applying it to the boss. This gives your teammates zero time to get into position to take advantage of it. Say you're putting on melting point and then give it 5 seconds or so before actually making your approach. Announce when you finally hit the guy so your Nova or Blades can get it and get a few crit shots as well before the buff disappears. My favorite combo for melting point is to go ahead and strike him, apply melting point, follow immediately by a grenade, then my super, and if somehow melting point is still applied, get as many headshots as possible. Polaris Lance, I believe, would absolutely destroy here. However, Arbalest does extremely well, and you don't realize how well it actually does until you switch out in the very beginning and realize you're taking way too long taking down those shields, when Arbalest can just, like, you know, two-shot just about everything. Ammo limitations, however, ammo does become frustrating if you're using Arbalest. So just do whatever you can. But like I mentioned, if you arrive with anything over five minutes, you're going to be just fine. Even four minutes is completely doable, and time is made up by improving your speed throughout the jumping puzzle. The more times you run it, the more times you get through it, the faster you can get to the end. And there could be some kind of amazing shortcut just waiting to be discovered. But anyways guys, after you beat the guy, congrats my friends, you are now the owner of my favorite pulse rifle from Rise of Iron back in days of D1. However, you will quickly find out celebrations are cut short because Heroic makes you learn entirely new pathways with much thinner ledges and timing, but that will be for another video. And yeah, that is really about it, Guardians. Before you log off, check out Eververse. Just like Whisper, once you acquire the weapon, two ornaments will become available. While one is a clear favorite here, both are pretty sweet. But yeah, that's it, guys. As always, thank you for watching and for supporting Sly Nation. Now, I've been on break for quite some time, and while I'm still deciding my next move and kind of future for the channel, I had to make a guide on how to get Outbreak for D2. I'm just hoping they didn't change it so much, because while the perks and weapons haven't changed, at least they haven't appeared to change, the nanites and the damage has. So we'll see how that impacts performance in the long run. Alright guys, well I'm out of here. I'll have a channel update video coming out here pretty soon and I'll go into detail about Anthem, taking a break, E3, the future of Sly Nation, and much much more. So stay tuned for that, but as always, thank you for watching and for supporting Sly Nation. If you're new to the nation, then welcome my compadre. Check me out on Twitter or Facebook at Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. Subscribe for upcoming gaming videos, E3 news, Destiny Anthem, and hopefully soon, hopefully we'll start talking Jedi Fallen Order. Later, y'all. Keep those eyes open for more vids coming out soon. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.